it's it's you know it's it's uh, it's complicated in Hollywood. Definitely. <laughs> Meet the pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. This episode is brought to you by Steel City Ammunition. Can't find ammo? We've got it. We'll ship it and our prices are fair. Mountain Man Medical. The right medical training and gear should be accessible to every American. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Hello, this is Meet the Pressers. I'm Matt Mallory, and this is my first time guest co-host, Mr. Craig DeLuce. It's awesome to have you, sir. Why don't you tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself so they can get to know you? Well, you know, first of all, Matt, let me just say I am just so honored to be your first. <laughs> I am just, this is a pleasure. I really, <laughs> yeah, cover your eyes, cover your eyes. Um, <laughs> I do, I do, I know seriously. Though, I pre- really do appreciate you inviting me to come on and uh, and be the the your first guest host, and especially considering who you're who uh, who we're going to be interviewing today and and what we're going to be talking about. It's a real exciting time. Uh, so, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Craig Deleuze. Um, I've been involved in the gun rights movement well since I want to say about 2012, 2013. Uh, I uh, was the legislative advocate, the chief legislative advocate for the Firearms Policy Coalition, as well as the host of Morning Coffee with Craig. Uh, Now I also am active with a group called 2A News. You can find us at 2anews.us, where we promote Second Amendment news uh, throughout the country, Uh, as well as I host a program called The Rundown. And The Rundown is a uh, program where it's uh, Monday Monday through Friday, uh, it's at noon, let's say noon Pacific, uh, and I want to say three Eastern, uh, Monday through Friday, where we talk about two-way news and conservative views. And it's an opportunity for me not just to talk about gun stuff, but to talk about political stuff. And, you know, seeing as how I am a card-carrying member of the vast right-wing conspiracy, uh, I like to talk about politics or conservative politics uh, as well. Uh, dude, I've been active in politics for about 30 years. Uh, I've been doing stuff like this, talking about news and politics uh, for almost about that same amount of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, with Matt uh, and uh, meet the pressers. And I do. I'm just so honored to be here with you. Yeah, well, I'm excited to have you on. I'm excited to have our guest on, too. So let's get to it. So we have some awesome guests here. Uh, Max, I've been following you for a while. And it's kind of funny because my wife and I will watch a movie. We'll just pull it up. This looks like a good movie. And we'll start watching it. Next thing you know, boom, Max pops up in the movie. And how many I don't know how many times I've emailed you and said, hey, I just saw a movie that you're in. Very true. Very true. I do pop up. Yeah, I think the most recent one was you were on a train tracks in an RV after just waking up drunk or something. And you got like obliterated and that yeah. wasn't a movie <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately that was uh that was the end of you in that movie but we still finished watching it of course but mm-hmm. yeah. so max we also have mike and, and chris here from the manson brothers a movie you guys have coming out and tell us a little bit about it tell us about the movie when it comes out when it premieres you, you guys want to want to start go ahead right, chris so the film was about two brothers who were a uh, aging tag team from professional wrestling. Uh, they've they've kind of gone past their glory years, and now they're back trying to kind of living in the independent circuit. They make their way back to New Mexico, um, where they have a buddy who's taking a imported uh, black market PED. Um, the, <laughs> a little protectionism a in there, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that uh, creates a, a mutant rabid zombie virus and we have to uh, lock down the arena and make sure that nobody gets out so there isn't a um, pandemic which seems to be a hot button word these days so uh, we're, we're trying to prevent that and uh, hilarity ensues from there and it comes out September 10th on iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, streaming services everywhere and video on demand and it's and also a limited theatrical release in about 10 cities as well. you're right now you said by Max 
Now you said voodoo and it made me think of woohoo. Was this invented in woohoo China or no? <laughs> I don't think there's a correlation there. Okay, just a second. I mean, there's Wuhan. Oh, Wuhan. 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 Yeah, I didn't know there was a Wuhan. Oh. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo is what you say when you go to a strip joint. <laughs> so not this, me. This, uh, not me. Many years. Not other people. This is a balls to the wall comedy. It's it's uh, if it, 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 you know, it's a, it's a crack your beers, kick your dogs up sit back enjoy the show there's a lot of buffoonery there's a lot of horror elements but it's but it's but it, it's inherently a, a a buffoonery uh a buffoon comedy right oh, my, 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 uh-huh. dumb and dumber kind of zombie comedy but but it, it, it's very funny and is it so, different from other roles you've played is this like the first one that you've done where it's it's this comedy this slapstick comedy if you will i directed it so this, I, the, Chris and Mike are the two stars of the film. This was something that I directed that they they brought to me after uh, Sergeant Will Gardner, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I'll, t- I'll talk a little bit about that because that because it, it is a good lead into this discussion. So I so I did Sergeant Will Gardner, which was a passion project for me that I started writing after, or actually. Uh, after a, a couple trips to the Middle East uh, while I was shooting the unit on CBS, for those that remember that show. And, Most definitely. And great show. Yep. And uh, and so the intention behind Will Garner was to raise awareness and monetary support for veterans, which is, uh, you know, something that's very close to my heart. I'm heavily involved in three or four charities, and then I support Thank you. a lot of others on the periphery, yeah. And, uh, and, and so that experience was very taxing. So when Mike and Chris said, Hey, you know, we have your follow-up movie, the, the Manson brothers, midnight zombie massacre. Uh, it made complete sense. And, uh, <laughs> and so we jumped into that, you know, but in keeping with, with, uh, you know, my, my efforts to, to help the veterans veteran community, there's a lot of veterans in Hollywood right now. So, mm-hmm. You know, we were able to get as many veterans as we could in lead roles on on screen. I believe we have four. Mike carries a veteran. Thank you, Mike. And uh, and then we had a lot of veterans working on the crew and behind the camera. So that's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I noticed that you play a, a lot of roles that are either military or law enforcement or somewhat kind of tactical. You know, shoot them up. How did you did? Is that something that you kind of planned on when you started in your acting career? Or is that just something that kind of came to be? It it really isn't. Uh, you know, my I I do have military in my family. My mother was in law enforcement, and so I was in and around that. But uh, kind of the you know the the thing that kicked it off was I I got a I auditioned for for uh, Saving Private Ryan. And I ended up getting that. And I think in Hollywood, the, the Steven Spielberg stamp of approval that says this guy can play a soldier, everybody jumped on. Nice. And, you know, and, and it, it, it's funny in a, in a way it really kind of shaped who I am today because uh, it didn't, it gave me this kind of mad respect for our military and what, uh, and the sacrifices that are made by these young men and women that serve. And, you know, at a certain point I realized, God, I would have loved to have, and I, and it's too late. And so I got involved in charitable work, but it's, it's, um, you know, it, it did domino into a lot of different military role, you know, roles and, and and lucky for me i've been able to be a part of so many great military shows and and that's uh, I, I just want to jump in about something about max that maybe a lot of people don't know it's a lot of celebrities pay lip service to that kind of stuff but max really believes in it and he really is sincere about it and uh what from the that's how we got to be friends uh mm. And uh, he, he really is a, a supporter and really busts his ass for veterans and goes awesome. out on a limb for everybody. And so that's true. And his, his heart is in it 100 percent. So it's not just somebody that's tub thumping it and getting on the, you know, the hey, look at me bandwagon. No, he lives it. He really does. So well, it's good to hear that. That's uh, you always wonder that with uh, 
politicians kind of right. that mindset of a politician where they say one thing and do another or what yeah what, what do they call virtue signaling, virtue signaling or whatever yeah. yeah it's not this isn't virtue signal not the case here no it's hard when you see some of these folks in hollywood who are very pro pro america in the roles they play but not necessarily in the things they do off the screen so yes yep. it is definitely very yep. very refreshing to see and good good to, yes. good often authenticity yeah yeah you know, look, I've raised two kids, uh, you know, and uh, successfully, and they're, they're amazing young guys. And, you know, I told, and, and I remember like one uh, has just become uh, of age to vote and the other nice. uh, is of age to start thinking about it, you know? And I said, look, man, the beauty of this country is that, you know, you have a choice, you know, and, and I don't care how you vote. But there's things that I'm passionate about, but you have as an American, this is what mm -hmm. the, our men and women go overseas and defend is your right to choose where you're where you want to stand. And I don't care what you choose as long as it's informed. So mm -hmm. that you sit down at a table, you can say, look, I'm supporting this president for the X, Y, and Z. Reason. Exactly. And I don't like this one for X, Y, and Z, but your responses are, are, are intelligent and informed. You know, right. that's smart. No, that's good. I mean, you're giving yeah. them their own, their own way to go, but you're also saying when you make that decision, make an informed decision. Don't just do right. it because somebody exactly. said to, or because of party lines or whatever. That's good. That's good. Well, it's very <laughs> difficult to find people who are fully informed. Most people get wind up in an echo chamber yeah. and they wind up only listening to people in positions that they agree with. Yeah. Uh, and the problem that creates is that that's only getting one half of the story. And if you're only getting one half of the story, you're not getting educated, you're getting indoctrinated mm -hmm. and only a fool would submit themselves to that. So I'm the type of person I try and get information on, on all sides. And then I take a look at it, determine what I can find to be the truth and use that to, to, to base my informed opinion. Yes. Um, you got to make up your own mind. You know, I have my own opinions. I don't begrudge anybody there. They don't like guns. They don't like guns. And that's not, what I believe, but I'm not going to begrudge them that. That's good. Whatever, but I don't think anybody should be forcing their opinion on anybody else. That's that's the thing. It's like we, let's have a discussion about it, and you can know where I stand, and I'll know where you're standing. We'll cool. have a drink over it, and whatever. What branch were you in, Mike? Marine Corps. Cool. I was I was Army. I, you know, we fought, right. fought for the same country. There you go. <laughs> I don't play that. I don't play that I inner know. service. I <laughs> I just you don't know, believe tell you why you know. because I'm not quick witted enough to <laughs> and Woody banter if they're like I have a crayon eater I'm like yeah oh okay. you know it's funny I heard that the other day our sons in the navy our son in laws in the navy and he uh he had, he had said that he, he, something about crayon eater and I was like what I haven't heard I that term. be honest I, I didn't never it, so I got out of the Marine Corps 31 years ago wow I never heard the term crayon eater until randy couture called me a crayon eater and i was really like, I was like, how does he know i ate crayons in grammar oh. school like, who told him like i was gonna call my brother but like, did you tell randy i ate crayons oh hey by, so by the way you know that the, we had like two of the the actors in this movie uh for those of you out there that are that are fight fans so Ra obviously randy couture is in the film and he's he's fantastic and, and like i said he's a veteran and uh, but Boz Rutan is also in the movie. Oh. He's amazing. He's so wow. funny. You he's, never seen him like this, and you never seen so Randy. Funny, like this. and he's like, so talented. And uh, you know, and really, uh, I mean, if you're a fight fan, you have to see these guys play these characters because you've never <laughs> seen them in form like this. It's a right. gas. It's That's so cool. funny. They're so good. Really. Hey, hey, let me ask you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Too. I, I just have to say, as a, as a, I, I guess I'll call myself a bystander from a military perspective because I wasn't in the military. One of the funniest things was listening to all the guys from the, who are in different branches of the military barb each other yeah. all day long about those things. I, I would sit back and laugh the most at that all the time. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. when, when everybody would call Dave Meadows, who was a you know decorated Navy SEAL, and he'd come in and everyone would say, "Hey, sailor," you know. It was, <laughs> I always thought <laughs> You know, hey, there, let me so. let me ask you guys. So one of the great things about doing comedy is like the the opportunity to actually not just go with the gags that are in the script, but to actually just stuff that just pops into your head as you're filming and and stuff that different uh, different actors come up with. Was there a lot of that going on on this film? 
I, I think, yeah, there absolutely was. I think one of the things that made this film um, funny, when, or at least I think when I see people watch it, the, they think it's funny, is that the humor was really, I don't want to call it unintentional, but it was a lot of just kind of banter humor between guys. Um, and, and, and that's a lot of just kind of, about, you know, there's oftentimes Mike and I are back and forth, our boss is back and forth with us a few times where it, you know, like you're saying, we're kind of going, just going at it and seeing what works. And, um, we did a ton of rehearsing of it. Max was, you know, one of the great things, uh, I have to say this about Max is, is, you know, as a director, we did a ton of preparation for this thing, particularly with, you know, I mean, I'm the least experienced of anybody and Mike, I mean, Mike's got a lot of experience, but not like a lot of the other people in the cast. So we really worked on, you know, kind of the timing and the beats and that kind of stuff before, which was one of the things that Max stressed so well. So that was a lot of prep, um, but it but it really, it carried over well into kind of the stuff you're talking about too. So but also too, again. it was very organic. And as a director, like Max was great about giving everybody the latitude to sort of explore that stuff. Nice. And even he would be behind the camera and we would do something and then he'd be like, Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. Let's try this. Or the three of us would be cool. sitting around in between scenes and we'd be like, Hey, you know, it would be really funny. And then somebody would say, it, and we'd be like, Oh yeah, let's try that. And that that's was cool. really great because it was really organic. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, when you're sitting around talking with your buddies, you know, in the locker room or next to your fire pit or whatever, and you, it comedy just happens that way. And I think that's sort of what, where ours is a little different because we're not telling jokes, you know, it's, it's, it's more in, like, that's a lot of intentional humor. humor. You, know, you know, how in the, in the world of wrestling, the, the, the costumes are, are very <laughs> flashy, elaborate, flashy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, you know, these are all wrestlers and we have these guys in these crazy costumes. I mean, and, and, like for instance, you know, they're like one of the guy, one of our veterans that that is uh, one of the leads in the movie. His name's Luis Fortunata, and he was in Sergeant Will Gardner, and so he's in the film, you know, and he and the they're preparing for this big Halloween match, and the guy that runs the the venue says, you know, hands him a a chorizo. Uh, outfit, right, and and makes him and says, you got to wear this. And he's like, no, I don't want to wear it. No, you got to wear it. And so we have <laughs> he's dressed up like a giant in a chorizo outfit, but he <laughs> becomes a, a zombie, and it's one of the most brutal attacks in the movie. But you know, yeah. he just doesn't play the fact that he's in a chorizo outfit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the con I mean, it's look, it's it's like comedy gold. It's it not politically true. correct. It's, no. you know, it's really out there, crazy, wacky comedy, and which I think uh, your audience is going to love, man. Uh, cool. But yeah, and it's and it's fun. But so it's really like it looks like it's broader than it is. And everybody played it very serious. Mike and Chris play to, uh, you know, complete uh, uh, idiot, dumb, summer, idiot, like brothers <laughs> that, that, that are, you know, just uh brilliantly uh unaware of what's That's really cool. happening around them, you know? thank you it's awesome that's awesome <laughs> so kim so my wife says that all the time you're brilliantly unaware of anything <laughs> that's, going on around. <laughs> that's like, funny I, or am i acting that way so mike i gotta go back when when uh when randy couture said that you're a crayon eater did did you like brush it off did you arm wrestle him did you oh, go yeah, to the mats right okay the yeah i just oh, wonder I like, like <laughs> no i laughed because i i laughed because i figured uh, you know i had not heard that before and then i found out that it was really very widely used and i'm like man where was i for four years i never heard that and then yeah. every year after that no, and uh, no, Randy's he's awesome. I there was a lot of busting of chops yeah, behind good. the scenes, yeah. and nobody ever, ever took slight no, to it. No. it the best set that way. Yeah, that we would bust each other's chops from Max on down. And do, it, do, it was, do you find that the guys that could just like break you with an index <laughs> finger are always the <laughs> nicest <laughs> guys? Yeah. That they, he is the sweetest dude I've ever met. 100%. Most yeah. gracious guy. Boss will kill you. Boss will yeah. probably yeah. Will let nice. you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But he's another one. They're oh, so no. Nice. He's so nice. They're both like the most unassuming, cool. gracious, uh, sweet people on the, on the I, planet. I they will kill you. you but. I have to 
I'll tell you guys a story. This is this is my favorite story from set. Wasn't even actually on set. I had the most confident moment of my life while shooting this film. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Mike Carey, uh, we, we wrestled together professionally many, many years ago. Uh, in his prime, I would have taken Mike Carey against any human being on the planet in a street fight. So that's, I, I mean that, and that's not hyperbole in any way. You're very kind. It's, it's 100% the truth. The first time I saw Mike Carey when I walked into a wrestling locker room, I almost quit right there and turned around. Because <laughs> I so, was naked. No, uh, <laughs> that was half of the reason. But uh, So we're out, we're out to dinner one oh, night goodness. Uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it's Randy and myself, and I think D.B. Sweeney was there, and there were yeah. you know a couple other guys. And again, I mean, I was a wrestler, so I, I, I feel like I can handle myself whenever you know I, I would possibly need to. But we come walking out of the restaurant, and, and Santa Fe has a very bad homeless problem, which a lot of cities do in America these days, which is a whole different topic, uh, especially when you live here in L.A. Yeah. Um, and and there, there were probably 16 guys in the middle of the street, and one of them was running around screaming, I'm going to kill all you fuckers. You know, he's just going crazy. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, I'm not at all concerned. And I walked right through the middle because I thought, I've got Randy Couture and Mike Carey with me. Well, you know, what do I have to worry about? <laughs> Uh, absolutely the most confident moment of my life. Um, I will never forget that as long as I live. So you I were a, a garbage can. You were a Randy and Mike sandwich. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were probably like, where is this guy leading us? <laughs> <laughs> Lambs to the slaughter. Uh, <laughs> now, was any of this backstage antics and stuff, any of this recorded that's going to come out on like outtakes or behind the scenes? Or that'd be um, funny. That'd be a nice. Like, I don't uh, think so. TMZ. We were such a, such a tight budget. <laughs> TMZ. We didn't, yeah. we didn't have extra it's, video. We didn't have the yeah. time. <laughs> gotcha. I, I, I do think people should follow us on social media because I, there will, the antics will ensue. I promise. Oh. And, and and, uh, you know, we're, we're notorious for putting the notes. You know, Max plays a lot of serious characters in film. You know, he's really a, an amazing, dramatic actor. And the first time I worked with him, I, I really was only familiar with one other film that he did. And uh, I, was, I don't watch a lot of media, unless it's horror movies. Fifty so, Shades uh, of Grey? What's that? Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Oh. <laughs> No, red I've seen everyone four times. Red Bell. Red Bell. <laughs> so when I when I met him, Blue pill. Uh, you know, when he was acting, he's really an awesome actor and he has this gift of underplaying everything, which is awesome. But what people most people don't know about Max is he's an absolute goofball and he's really funny. So comedy <laughs> maybe was a different thing for him to direct, but it was a very natural thing for him to create because he's just a funny guy. You know, all you have to do is spend 10 minutes with him and you'll be laughing your ass off. So Yeah, it, it, it cool. seems like in every movie I see you in, you play an angry dude. I'm like, you've smiled more in this interview than you have in probably every movie I've seen you in. <laughs> it's true, man. No, yeah, I, God, I don't know. I, you know, I wanted to uh, uh, bring some of that. Some, You know, like one thing that I've noticed that with the, in, the, in the military is that there is, and law enforcement, is there's so much comedy. And, you know, I, I was on, I had this, like, I got invited on this, uh, the, the, there were, in LA, this is like years ago, they were serving like 37 warrants simultaneously. They had all these, uh, all, all these branches of law enforcement met in this parking lot. There were probably 200 guys out there and, and, and uh, they, there were th like, I think 37 drug houses in and around LA that they were hitting wow. it, it, synchronized, right? And, uh, and they let me fight right along. I don't know how I get invited in on this stuff, but they, but you know, I put on my, on my, uh, you know, my, my Kevlar and, we, and yep. we were hanging on the side of this, this armored vehicle heading into South Central. And, and these guys are telling jokes and like, I mean, it was a, and then literally turn the corner and right as we got onto the block, it just got really serious and they went straight to work. Yep. And, uh, but the comedy is so important and prevalent yeah. in that, you know, in combat and I, as I, as I understand it, and in uh, police, uh, police work, you know. It's kind of like uh, if you watch MMA fighters, especially like, uh, um, oh, shoot. 
can't believe I just forgot his name, but you know, they'll, they'll sometimes punch themselves, get them all psyched, get them, get themselves psyched up, you know, kind of like that with the comedy kind of takes away that seriousness because you got to be serious in a second, more serious than you've ever been to make sure that you, you and your brothers and sisters can make it through that situation. So yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. just that, you know, that mindset, take your mind off for a second so that you can, you know, relax and then turn around and you know, kind of like you did with a movie. You went yeah, from the one movie to this movie. You went from really serious to yeah. a comedy. But maybe I'll lighten up a little bit next time I'm uh, yeah, putting the rounds out of range. Yeah. I think, though, even like I was a fireman for 15 years after the military, and I think in the we use comedy was you use that to get through bad situations, yeah. too. Yep. You know, you guys know I, I've never been in combat militarily, um, but I would assume that that would, you know, sort of, you know, be a say a tool for that as yeah. well where it's like hey but this we don't want to deal with this right now right you know, let's you know especially if it's a kid or something like that you know and you know you gotta you have to lighten it up otherwise you you're just gonna implode yeah right exactly exactly well, there's there's two ways to go drugs and alcohol or comedy those those, right, two, exactly. those two things can a hundred percent make you or break you percent yeah. 100%. So, very true. So any tidbits, any spoilers, or maybe not spoilers, but any uh, thing you can tell us from the movie that um, our viewers and listeners might get that they wouldn't get until uh, they watched it? Let me see. Have you read the oh, PR? I think everything's straight up front. We don't hide anything. What, what's There's separate? a sequel in the works, so you know we make it out. <laughs> so, There's I a sequel. I like that. Right. I like that. <laughs> not all of you make it out, though. No. Max, what were you gonna say? Uh, no, I was gonna say you're a horror fan. You know, you should talk. You should talk about what separates this from other horror films. I, I think what this what sets this apart from other horror and horror comedies because there have been other ones. There's numerous ones: Return of the Living Dead, April Fool's Day. We could you, know, you could name a, a dozen of them. I think the difference between this one and other ones is the way that we present you the comedy. Right. So this is not like we, we're the so Max keeps using the term off the wall, which is a, it's completely true. The comedy is absolutely it's ludicrous, but we play it as if it's really happening. So we we don't we're not giving you. Um, uh, what's a, I'm trying to think of a good word for it. Like it's, it's not a, slapstick. It, no, it's it can get it gets a little slapstick, it but okay. it's not in a it's not in a ridiculous setting. It's just okay. like as if this were really happening. These guys might be saying this stuff, or this actually might happen. But who I, I honestly I, I can't I keep going back to Dumb and Dumber because you know those <laughs> because those guys it's a classic man. Yeah. But, but Mike and Chris are that good in with with that with thank you but dumbing it down for this film you. And, and you know uh and if you like dumb and dumber you know it, or if you have a sibling like so it's two it's these brothers and they're constantly bickering you know something really serious is going on and all of a sudden these two guys are bickering as if nobody else is in the room or involved you know how, you, how brothers or sisters for yeah. that matter siblings in general will start fighting and there's like they'll, you'll be in a room of people like at a holiday event or something and they could be they don't give two shits they're going to carry that. on what they're carrying on with so that's that's sort of it but i i think it's also the way max directed it too it's different you know he doesn't have a background in horror so he wasn't influenced by any other film so what you get is you get a really novel take on the material that you probably have not seen before cool. and a lot of the advanced um feedback we've gotten from people who have seen it so we screened it at a horror convention a couple of weeks ago for 300 people and first of all nobody walked out um and they <laughs> cheered at the end and the feedback that chris and i got was all positive and all and these are hardcore horror fans which I you know I was pr pretty nervous about because I watched a lot of horror movies I'm like oh are they gonna accept this thing but they did and it was nice. because of the way Max put the thing together and put it on screen so the way he interpreted the script was really and the characters was really how you you, you get this it's a hundred percent it's a different angle yeah that's cool I think one of the things you see in it too is a lot of times when you see horror comedies the horror parts are camped up to be comedic as well. And this isn't that. 
Uh, now, you will get a guy in a chorizo outfit who's mauling someone to death. But the difference is, is that mauling is legit. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not done for this time. is not for the faint of heart. We don't we don't cut away from the red stuff. It's coming out, you know, in buckets and not again in a campy way. It's it's a legit like this is a zombie tearing somebody, you know, to death entrails and the whole deal. Um, so I think that's where it really separates itself from a lot of films like like this, I guess you could say, is that it, it's funny. It's got all those elements. But when it's time to get you know get to getting horrible yeah there's a there's a part really of the movie and i'm not going to give it away where people are laughing 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 and then all of a sudden something shocking happens and 300 people went <gasps> and i was like yeah. oh we got him nice. you know we got him and it's because that's that awesome. he, he didn't play it for laughs he knew when it was when it shouldn't be and yeah. that's was the thing you know so we played the comedy up until it was time to not have the comedy anymore and then we went back to it even after, which makes it completely ridiculous. So it's truly a, a, a zombie comedy movie, not a comedy. Yeah, yeah. a zombie. There, there, there's a, zombie. A, you know, it's, it's binary in a sense that it, it kind of you know separates itself a little bit from That's neat. from one another. Well, this, this is this has been good. So uh, easiest way to for somebody to find all the location that the movie's going to play on, all your social media website address. Uh, www.mansonbrothers.com. Pretty um, simple. We'll have all that information up there. Uh, we'll have the markets that the film is in the theatrical in. It's obviously larger markets, LA, New York, that kind yep. of thing. Um, and then we'll we'll as well list the the cable venues that you can go VOD, um, as well as iTunes, Amazon, anything like that. You can yeah. find us uh, at Manson Brothers the movie uh, on Instagram at Max Martini LA at C Margettis and at real Mike Carey on Instagram. And we're always posting about us and we're funny too much, probably <laughs> too much, N never, never too much. Uh, and, and the release date once again, for the listeners and viewers, September 10th, September 10th, September 10th. Nice. Oh yeah. And you can get these t-shirts at mansonbrothers.com. <laughs> shameless plug. No, no shameless. That's perfect. I love it. And the sequel we're working on the sequel. Yeah. We're nice. Working on the sequel. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Well, if, you, if you ever need any extras to get killed off in the sequel, I, you know, I'll throw myself in the in the mix. You know, what's oh, funny down. about that really quick <laughs> in closing was like when we announced this film was coming out. So guys in professional wrestling always want to get into movies, especially guys that were like at our level, which is like, you know, local wrestling. These guys coming out of the woodwork. Hey man, can you get me on Chicago PD? I'm like, I can't get me on Chicago PD. I'm like, I want, I'm lucky I got to act in my own movie. Martin wanted to cast two other guys. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So no extra work for me. I got it. <laughs> All right. Awesome, guys. It's been it's been fun. Anything else, Craig? Any uh, parting words or thoughts? No, just, you know, I, I'm excited that my IMDb will include a credit with Max Martini. There you go. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. That, that is the, a, best that... the best. And let me just say in closing that, you know, Chris and I are amazingly grateful to Max because without him, cool. none of this happens, really. Wow. And he did it out of friendship, you know, more than he did it out of, you know, altru you know, like, I'm sorry, like reasons, selfish reasons, like he really... He did out of friendship. It was a lot of hard work. We had a lot of walls. And him and our producer, Mike Haggerty, made the whole thing work in spite of all the obstacles that just, like every obstacle we could have faced was were dropped in our way. And uh, responding in a military manner, we overcame and uh, we improvised and adapted and we got it done anyway. But it was only because of him. Uh, you know, him and Mike, uh, especially uh, the willingness to work with two complete unknowns, right? Well, exactly, because that was as a big reach. Because that's, that's a big reach for a director, that's a big reach, and uh, I, you know, beyond appreciative for it. You know, this this is something reminisce they say in my classes there's nothing in this world worth dying for other than somebody you love. So, yeah. you know, relationships is why we're here, all the tangible shit you can't take to the grave with you. So, 100%. Tangible stuff. Days, nice, but... Chris is going to be this huge star, and Max is going to be like, "Chris, can you get a movie?" And Chris is going to be like, "I don't know if I have anything." Dad, <laughs> so it won't matter, but yeah. oh. that will never be the case. I can assure you, for a lot of reasons, <laughs> it will never happen. Cool. Well, it's been a pleasure, guys, and uh, and hope we can get Craig, you Thank some... you so much, man. Thanks, Craig. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Thank All right, kids. Thank you again. Stay safe, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.
There's lots of sponsors that make this show possible, like Mountain Man Medical. Check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Steel City Ammunition. Can't find ammo? We've got it. We'll ship it and our prices are fair. Mountain Man Medical. The right medical training and gear should be accessible to every American. Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by other fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching or listening to our show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, click that little bell thingy so you know when the next episode's uploaded. Support us on Patreon. Come to one of our classes. Host us to come to you and do one of our classes at your location. And until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers.